extrapolation or forecast. You need those issues very often in science, in business. You want to predict values that you have not observed in the future or beyond the range you have measured. I used a very simple example. I put in column B for every month how many sales calls we placed and in column A how many actual sales came out of those calls. Now you want to find out how many sales calls do I have to place in order to get 100 sales. That is a forecast or an extrapolation that is beyond my range. Sometimes to, to see what is going on it's nice to have a very simple chart that shows you the relationship between those two. I made that chart already for you. It's, when you look at it you will see when the sales calls go up also the actual sales go up. That is to be expected probably. It, it looks like it's a linear relationship. Be careful on that. It could be that the more sales calls you place, things are going to level off because the market gets saturated or whatever. But let's assume that we can extrapolate to 100 sales. The easiest way to do that is to put that trend line through here, the linear trend line, a linear curve. Right click on any observation point, add a trend line, and Excel goes by default for a linear trend line and that is probably correct. If you want to calculate that line later on, you should set display the equation to true to yes. And this is the equation behind that trend line. But there is also another nice tool there. You can forecast forward. I want to forecast from the last 195 to 100 so I go up by 5 periods. Backwards would be interpolation. And it says that is the point for 100 things so to find what that is on the y axis exactly I would need that formula. So I'm going to use that formula to find that point more exactly. Yeah, what is exactly that curve is not correct, uh, exact because it is a guess. It is a linear trend line and it does not really follow that trend line. But let's ignore that situation for now. And we are going to calculate the point for 100 sales. So the easiest way of doing that is using this equation. And that's what I did in this cell. Equals 7 point something times 820, which is 100 sales, plus the intercept. The 7 point is called the slope and the last one is called the intercept. I won't go into the details any further. So I get a prediction of 957. That is that point here. You can probably read it from the chart if you have a good axis grid line system. But still, I, what I don't like is I have to type all those digits. And what is important to realize that those digits may not be exact enough. So how can you make them more exact? You just format that trend label and you set the number category to a real number but with more decimal places than now. Let's say 7. You can go to a a max of 15. So these are more digits. So to calculate here I would need probably more digits. But is 7 enough? I don't know. That is just a matter of guessing. So I, I need a better tool and that is fortunately the trend function. The trend function allows you to calculate very exactly with a 15 digit precision what that point is. 957 point and 12 more digits. How do you do it? The known y's are in column B. That means the observed y's. The observed axes are in column A and your new axis is in A22. The end result is 957. 
You can even do this for multiple values. Let's say you want 100 sales, 110, 120. What you do is you select all these cells where you want to find your sales calls number. Select them all at once. Start the trend function again. In column B otherwise, in column A are the axes, but now the new axes are in three cells. So what does trend this time do? It gives you three different answers. This is the first answer, the second answer, and the third one you cannot see. How do you get all those answers at once? With Control shift enter Don't forget Control shift enter If you had forgotten that, let me simulate that. I click in the formula bar, and I do just the Control enter It says, sorry, here is your first value, but the second one I cannot display, and the third one I cannot display. When you make that mistake, go back to your formula bar, you still have the three cells selected, and do Control shift enter and it will give you the results beautifully. I told you this is a very simple situation. Sometimes the situation is more complicated. Here I have different values, different observations, and you will see in order to get more actual sales, I have to place an increasing number of sales calls. It's harder and harder to reach all the sales you want to reach. So this is not a linear relationship anymore. How do you find out what the trend curve is behind this thing? Uh, at this moment it is trial and error. I don't like that, so I will show you at the end how you can find more information to make it not a trial and error situation. Let me show you what I did here. I used the trend line that is of the polynomial type. Trial and error will show you that it's not exponential, it is not linear of course, it's not logarithmic, but it's polynomial. Of which order? That means is it with three slopes? Order 3, if you make it 2, it's not a good one. 3 is better, 4 would be even better maybe, 5 even better, we will not discuss that issue here. I'm going for the simpler one. Order of 3, it's good enough for now. Make sure that you display the equation on the chart. I also added a forward, forward forecast if that curve were correct. Make sure that you have enough decimals. For if you want now to calculate what 105 sales would be, then you need to be as precise as possible. Again, the trend line is not exact, so don't go fluky there. But what I did there is I copied that entire equation in here, and I did the first slope times a20 to the power of 3, and then the next slope times the power of, to the power of 2, to the power of 1, plus the intercept, which happens to be negative in this case. And of course I could have also done that here. I put that equation in there, and you will see that my expected or forecasted numbers are close to the real numbers. These are all basically interpolations that is inside my range, but 105 is outside my range. Forecasting is always dangerous, especially when the future is concerned, I always say in a joking way. I still find this a lot of work. You have to get that formula there. So let's use the trend function again. Can we use the trend function? Yeah, but trend is for linear situations. No problem for a polynomial one. All I have to do is insert a new column B that gives me the actual sales to the power of 2, a new column C, the actual sales to the power of 3, and I use those three columns in my predictions. Let's try trend again. Remember trend can return multiple values, so we select trend. The only difference this time is not the y's, they are still in one column, column D, but the axes are in three columns now. Don't forget Control shift enter for you get multiple answers. Control shift enter and these are my predictions. 
those are the spots sometimes just above or sometimes below my actual observations. 105, with the equation we would have gotten this. Can we do this with the trend function? Sure. If you make sure that you have again three cells for 105 to the power of 1, to the power of 2, to the power of 3. And there is your trend function again. This time I have to make sure that my new axes are the three cells. And this is my end result. What I don't like is that I need to insert new columns. Can I use the trend function without doing that? Sure. Here we did that. What does the trend function do? Exactly the same as before, but without using new columns. The secret is here. A4 through A16, that is just one column. But internally the trend function is going to use that column and puts it once times to the power of 1, a second column to the power of 2, and to the power of 3. So you put inside braces 1, 2, 3. That means it creates three internal arrays of that column. And it does all of that beautifully. Of course you can do exactly the same for your forecast or your extrapolation. But the trend function can do it if you know which tricks to use. The known axes require that to the power of 1, 2, 3. And the new x also requires that 1, 2, 3 to the power of. Control shift enter will give you the end result. You need to know more as I told you already. You need to know how to do curve fitting and all that kind of things. I will not discuss that here for I did that in three CD-ROMs and two books. You can find these at genesispc.com and then they go into many more details and many more things you should know.